Hello everyone, how are you? I know I said I was coming live at 8 p.m., but we decided to come live a little earlier just because it worked better for our schedules. And also I know these are all recorded, so it's fine. But I am going live once he comes on with um, Dr. Lauren Brown of AccuSimple, AccuSimple, that's my electronic health record system, of AccuWellness. And Lauren and I are both acupuncturists and herbalists, but Lauren also has a specific expertise in lasers and I guess we could say laser therapy and how um, he uses it in his clinic to help with fertility and so let's see I don't see him live yet I want to just keep waiting for him um let me see but anyway I want to pull up the study um so there was a study out of Japan in I think it's 2012 Uh, yeah, 2012. Let me just see. Is he on yet? Come on. Where's my Lauren? I'm going to just see if he's on. Accu. You are not on yet. What is going on, Lauren? Um, there he is. Okay. Yay. Um, at, go live. You did it. Let's see. Did that work? I... I, um, there we go. Hi. All right. I figured it out. <laughs> How hey, Amy. are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing over there oh, on the East Coast? I'm good. I'm good. We just had some dinner. How about you? Mm -hmm. On the West uh, we're, Coast? We're not quite ready for dinner yet, but the sun's starting to sun. go a little bit low here. So it's a nice, it's a nice sunny day in Vancouver. Oh, that's so nice. What's the weather like? What's the temperature? Um, uh, 12 Celsius, so I don't know what that is Fahrenheit for you, but it, it's a nice spring day. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I love it. Um, so I was actually just telling everybody, I was pulling up the study from 2012, the one um, Oshiro study, personal overview of the application of LLLT in severely infertile Japanese women. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I should first probably introduce you or let you introduce yourself. Yeah. Why don't you tell everybody who you are and all, all your things? Yeah, so. So, um, like Amy, I'm a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. We have a focus in fertility in Vancouver. Clinic is AccuBalance. Friend of clinical hypnotherapy. Um, have a big passion for low-level laser therapy, also known as photobiomodulation. And I'm the host of the Conscious Fertility Podcast. Oh, my God. Oh, I love it. I need to get yeah. on your podcast. I didn't know you had a podcast, Lauren. Yeah, get you on there, um, for sure. So, so tell us. You know, so anyway, I want to back this up. We've already done a live on this actually once before, probably two years ago, I think at this point. But um, in more recent times, I had seen some uh, posts on social media of people talking about the more of the red light therapies, like, uh, you know, I hate to say brand names, but like Juve or Saluma and, and then quoting this actual study, the Japanese study and saying this is equal to that kind of thing. And, mm, and from what okay, I understood yeah. <laughs> from talking with you and, and everything I've learned about lasers, that it's not exactly the same. And so I texted you and I was like, Hey, I just want to clarify with you. And then you and I were texting and I said, you want to come on live? And so we can just like share with everybody. And I think before we go any further too, no, no judgment or any, anything negative against the the red light therapy um devices out there i think they can be helpful for certain to improve circulation and blood flow and as we would say like warm the child's palace and, and bring warmth and blood flow to that area to the uterine and reproductive area but what was done in this study and you were telling me we were just talking on the phone before uh, a, another study as well that it's different so maybe you can describe what are the differences so people could understand sure well We'll start with just some like the terminology and maybe a little bit of history behind that um, Dr. Shiro's study. So the the scientific term is called photobiomodulation. Okay. Um, a lot of people, will, and we still use the term because most people know it as low level laser therapy. Um, they refer to it as cold laser as well. So the non-heating um, types of laser. So these are low level meaning 
They're not going to cut or burn you. They're not the type we use for like um, sculpting or hair removal. So you don't usually feel anything with low level laser therapy. The red light therapy, that term or fo is a form of photobiomodulation. So in low level laser therapy, there's a, a spectrum of wavelengths of so colors. Right. The most common when it comes to clinical and for fertility is using um, either color red or infrared. Okay. And those are wavelengths and um, infrared goes deeper than red just because of the wavelength. It can go deeper into the tissue. Okay. Um, and then there's LEDs right. and then there's lasers, right? And, um, and so they're not the equivalent. You, if somebody's saying I have like a, one of those red light therapies that's off the body, doesn't even touch the body because a lot of the light will reflect when it's off the body. So you're not absorbing that much either for it to have a, an, a, uh, an effect on the body, so the modulation, the impact on the body, the tissue has to absorb the light. So if it doesn't absorb the light, there is no therapeutic effect. Interesting. So okay. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter that your the light's coming at you. If your body's not absorbing it, then there's probably not going to be any benefit. And then there's a whole dosing, how many joules to create a therapeutic effect. Dose. Okay. But your but your question about the Oshiro study, uh, I'll mention what what had happened in the study and just say you can't say it's equivalent. They're both using photobiomodulation, but red light therapy is LEDs. And in that study by Oshiro, he used laser, not LEDs. Right. Um, his wavelength was infrared at 830 nanometers. Um, and uh, red light would not be 830 because that would make it infrared. So right. it, it would have been in probably in the 600 somewhere is the red yeah. light. So, and so then, that all is a big difference though. Well, or, it's not or the same. It's, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's like same. saying, it's like saying, um, you know, the broad spectrum, like we have um, pharmaceutical drugs, right? So that's like photobiomodulation. So it's a, it's a spectrum. And then somebody did a study with a certain drug with a certain dosage. And then somebody else says, well, um, I, I'm doing the same thing as that drug, but they're using a totally different drug, right? It's, it's, it's they're both using pharmaceutical drugs, but, but that's, that's it. Right. right? Okay. So, okay. so, so it would be a big reach to say that they're doing the same thing because that Oshiro study, the proximal um, Oshiro study, he did treatment around um, uh, the the vertebral artery and brainstem, and then the carotid, um, stellate ganglia, and then um, um, what we call REN12, just between mm -hmm. um, the belly button and the zygote process. And his 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 reasoning was to engage the parasympathetic to increase blood flow everywhere. So in this case, getting blood to the ovaries. Um, which is what we do a lot with acupuncture. Yeah. Right? So, but the reason, via yeah. engaging the parasympathetic nervous system, so via these different yeah. points, not directly yeah, he, over the ovaries, right? He didn't even do over the ovaries yeah. in his study, no. And it was an accident. So he discovered this by accident. So what happened is in the 90s, um, I sure was treating a woman who was already in menopause for back pain. So um, he would always treat up around the neck to create the parasympathetic response to create create blood flow head to toe. Um, in doing so, if she had back pain or if it was knee or foot pain, you're going to bring blood to that area, which will support healing. So mm -hmm. in this case, he did his treatment around the neck. Then he would go locally and treat the back. And he did a series of treatments and he resolved her back pain and her cycle came back. She started bleeding and her period came back. Um, she bleed like four to five days for, um, for several months. It would go you know, on a monthly basis. He thought it had nothing to do with him. And because she'd already been in menopause, um, he suggested she see her gynecologist, right? Because you're bleeding and, yeah, and make sure everything's okay. Menopause. Yeah, he yeah. just said, yeah, not me. Don't, it's just, a, just a, a fluke, coincidence. But in the same calendar year, another woman who was in menopause, treated for back pain, her period came back. So he said, well, if we're bringing blood flow head to toe, then what he, he suspected was happening is we're bringing blood to the ovaries. So maybe we're helping rejuvenate or support the ovaries by bringing blood flow. So they did a study, a pilot study of 74 yeah. women. The English translation was severe infertility. So I, can, I don't remember the details, but let's somewhere around average age, 39, yeah. nine years of infertility, That's 15 it. ART cycles. You got it all. Average okay. 39, I have it right here. Okay, nine years of infertility. Yeah. yeah. And then the first group, they had a 22% pregnancy rate and a 68% live birth rate. Pretty good for that demographic. And then they expanded the study Seven. to just over 700 women. Yeah. And they got similar, 22% mm -hmm. pregnancy rate again, and this time 50% Yeah, higher pregnancy. Rate. Yeah. 
higher miscarriage rate, right? But you know, the you know his dosaging you knows all over the place. Some got twice a week, some got once a week, some got every oh. other week, right? Okay. So you know, you know, lots was, of variables. Yeah. Yeah, lots of variables, but hey, still pretty good. When you, what I would share with the audience is there's two things that we know. There's the mechanism that has really good science, which shows promise, promise that it could help with fertility. And we can discuss what the mechanisms are. The other part is, do we know how it helps? There are not a lot of robust studies showing um, how it improves fertility. We got the mechanism, so we're using it because the mechanism makes sense. But there's been studies on rats. So we saw some rat studies that were put through IVF that showed the improved um, embryo quality. So that was, that that's sense. exciting. Okay. You know, there's been stuff um, in, um, in vitro, um, as in Petri dish, um, lasering uterine tissue and showing a certain dosage will cause uterine receptivity by seeing certain gene expression and chemicals and enzymes being released for mm -hmm. uterine receptivity. Um, there's been some studies using it for polycystic ovarian syndrome, studies um, for dysmenorrhea and endometriosis. So um, we're seeing things, but to say, um, like I get asked, like what home system do you recommend, yeah, right? That's, I that's would say it. at this point in time, based on the science I understand, the mechanism, you still need a professional system. Why? Because they have the power um, so you can get the right dosage to the target tissue. Because it's not enough just to get photons there. You have the right wavelength but you have to leave it on for a certain amount of time to get the, the dosage there in order to create a therapeutic effect. So a lot of the home systems probably um, won't get the dosage there. And a lot of them are off the body. So you're losing, um, there's, um, uh, what did I say? Um, when they, ba they bounce yeah. off, right? There's, they're not being absorbed, you reflect yeah. it off. So, so the mechanism is exciting, it holds promise, but nobody's done enough studies to say if it works. And when somebody asks me about the home systems, um, I will look at certain home systems and, and say, yeah, you can do this. This is what I would do. But nobody studied the home system to say that it did anything. That's it. So, That's why I was upset when I texted you that day. I'm like, this is upsetting me that they're saying X equals Y, but I don't think there's actually been any research. And I no. I just feel like these girls, you know, you guys, we're speaking to you guys, you're invested so much and there's so many things you want to try and so many things you want to do. And I think it's our job to deliver, you know, the best information we can to you so that you can make the most appropriate, you know. Yeah, decisions. it's kind of experimental. It's like PRP. Yeah. Um, there's not robust data. There's data. Yeah, there's data. But there's not robust data and there's conflicting data. Um, the mechanism, okay, let's try it. It's a do, do no harm. But, yeah. um, you know, to say do PRP and it's going to work. Um, it would be misleading yeah. to say do laser it's going to work would be misleading and you and I know and your audience knows this that in Chinese medicine we say nourish the soul before you plant the seed mm -hmm. and so when we look at the soil what are the things that can impact the soil soil being here the metaphor for cellular mm -hmm. health the ovarian health that's going to support um, the fo follicular genesis so egg yeah. quality you know if you have oxidative stress that's not good for egg quality if you have inflammation not good for egg quality um, if they're um, if you have toxins, um, not good for egg quality, poor blood flow, yeah. um, not good for, for egg quality for that cellular environment. So the reason the laser has promise um, is a couple of things. And I'll go kind of each one and I'll, if you're okay with that, I'll, I'll just elaborate a little bit. But the first one that we get excited about is that low level laser therapy, photobiomodulation, when it reaches the target tissue, so it has to reach the tissue, we're not convinced we can get the light to the ovaries yet, right? right? because that's pretty deep yeah. compared to the laser. Now the manufacturers all say this depth, that depth, don't believe them. Okay. I think they're overstating all the, the one I have here. Cause that, <laughs> when I talked to power medic, she had said something like red light only penetrates a few millimeters. Yeah. Laser increases ATP, increased blood, increased immune. Um, and it goes 10 to 12 centimeters. She gave me like a very specific number, which, so, Either way, so, even if she said yeah. a centimeter to a millimeter, yeah. I think there's a difference there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know how, how much we want to go into it, but I'll, yeah, I'll share with no. you with me, me with me talking to manufacturers and researchers around low level laser therapy. I'm actually heading off to um, Europe um, this summer because I'm going to be the chair of the photobiomodulation um, fertility track. They have a fertility track, and they brought some experts oh, in from Japan. So we'll amazing. we'll see what we'll learn from them. Yeah. But to share to share kind of with your that was a sidetrack because it was just reminding me of like the mechanism. So here's some of the mechanisms we know. 
Then there's some other mechanisms that we're learning about that's very new, that's kind of like, whoa, like we didn't know we could do that. And then there's things that we're seeing it get results, but it does not make sense from science because the photons are can't be reaching that level of the tissue, right. and yet we're seeing a change at that level of the tissue. So, so, so we, so that's why I'm saying we don't know. Is it because um, it's say, helping like mitochondrial function though, even at a, a higher up, if you will, or more, you know, well, cellular here's why level? I think it works. Yeah, here, go ahead. I think it helps with the soil. So yeah, I'll okay. start off with. I'll remind me to talk about the mitochondria health because that's the most exciting, but it's also, I think, the most difficult to impact um, by reaching the ovaries with the light. Right. But so low level laser therapy has been shown to help regulate inflammation. Right. Um, you know, think of um, endometriosis, mm -hmm. think of PCOS has an oh. inflammatory component. Oh. Just think of inflammation, chronic systemic inflammation leads to accelerated biological aging. We want to be as biological young when we're as trying we to conceive, can. right? Yeah. And so if it can help regulate inflammation, then that's going to have cellular health. So this can help you as an individual on many levels to bring down the biological age and uh, hopefully lower your risk for disease, including infertility. Yeah. Um, these are all speculations, right? right? We know it helps inflammation, which is why it's used so well for painful conditions, right? For injuries and pain, helps with the inflammation. It's a regulator. Um, and it's not, it's a regulator. It's not like taking an anti-inflammatory, which shuts down inflammation. Right. For example, there was a nice study, the NIH that talked about recommending PBM, photobiomodulation, mm -hmm. also known as low-level laser therapy for back pain. Why? When you take an anti-inflammatory, it gets rid of the pain, but it shuts down not only the pain part of it, um, it also gets rid of the pro-inflammatory um, cytokines we need right. for healing. Right. When the laser does it, it helps get rid of those uncomfortable, painful chemicals without shutting down the healing part of it. Uh -huh. And so when you take pain meds, it, it's, you end up getting rid of the acute pain but, and end up often with chronic pain, yeah. right? Where the laser therapy is going to help with the inflammation that's uncomfortable, but it doesn't stop the healing response. So you still get healing from it. So this is not to say laser reduces inflammation, probably not fully accurate, it regulates inflammation. Right. It down-regulates some, um, some of the cytokines and up-regulates oh, others that we need yeah. for immune yeah. health and healing. It's been shown to improve blood circulation. So in the Oshiro study, he did um, thermophotography and in his photography, he had somebody and he, he took pictures front and back and showed the hot spots and cold spots in the body, circulation. And after the fifth session of low-level laser therapy, the person head to toe was full of circulation. So it had this ongoing improvement of circulation when you have a series of treatments. Um, it can help um, so, um, um, soften scar tissue yeah. adhesions, right? So, so that can be exciting for certain things. It's been shown to help with the gut microbiome. That was done in a Parkinson's study when it's over the gut, where Parkinson's, there is now a link between the gut microbiome and inflammation yeah. and yeah. Parkinson's. Yeah. So they treated the gut and the brainstem um, and they did some genetic um, DNA sequencing so they could see that the microbiome changed with the, with the uh, laser therapy. So it can help with the gut microbiome. So just think of what the laser's doing. And then there's the, so that you get from a systemic effect. You put the laser on certain areas, it's, it's irradiating the blood, yeah. um, you're regulating inflammation. If you put it into certain areas, it'll increase blood flow. We just learned now that the blood may have some um, these free mitochondria that then is traveling to other parts of the body. So maybe that's why it can help the ovaries. Maybe, right? yeah. Because, you know, because there's so much we don't know. But with that mechanism, the mitochondria, the reason that gets everybody excited when it comes to fertility and using photobiomodulation, and this is why you t people take coenzyme Q10 uh -huh. and alpha-lipoic acid, yeah. is the mitochondria, as we age, they wear down, and the, the ovary has lots of mitochondria, more than any... Uh, or, or tissue in the body, right? The heart, you'd think the biggest muscle would have all the, the mitochondria, right? The most mitochondria, I mean, because they're the batter of the cells. We need that energy. Yeah. But no, it's the ovaries. And when the embryo is dividing, that's coming from the female line, their mm -hmm. mitochondria the, to the embryo, and it requires a lot of energy. So when it's dividing in an IVF in the lab or in the fallopian tube, if it's, if it's happening uh, natural that way, um, that takes energy, and we need mitochondria for that. Mm -hmm. And then implantation takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So that's the mitochondria health. And a lot of the chromosomal errors that we see when we're doing the PGTA testing and just the um, issues with embryos is due to, we think, 
um, we as in science, Western science, um, impaired mitochondria function. Right. So when a plant receives sunlight, it uses photosynthesis to convert it to energy. Well, when the human cell, cytochrome C, absorbs red or infrared light, wow. um, it converts that into wow. ATP. So what happens is um, the uh, on the uh, cytochrome C absorbs the, the, the photon, it dislodges nitric oxide, and it improves the ATP production, more energy production, which is what we want. Here's the kicker, though. The tissue has to receive that light. So we're not convinced right. if the light is getting to the ovaries. What do I think the future is? You know how women have, they can do an atrophalco count and they'll put the probe in vaginally and then- We can just do the laser the right there. Yeah. They're gonna, if somebody could build a probe with the infrared light on Murray, the probe- Murray, you're on then, here, Eric. Do you hear then, this? Listen, go ahead, say it again. If somebody then, could build, and, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he'll do build it. a probe. Okay. And then when it's, and then point it towards the, cause then, you know, cause the ovaries aren't where they usually are in a textbook. Yeah. Like they can move, they move around a bit. Right. I know Scratches my right one is like always like yeah. he, he says it's in China. <laughs> so sometimes we're, sometimes we're putting laser over the abdomen, but maybe the ovaries not even in that area. Right. And there's right. intestines and things are in the way. Right. Yeah. When we do that. So are we getting the light directly to the ovaries directly? Don't know. Yeah. But here's other things that we've learned for other diseases, like kidney diseases. There's things that are, you know, they're doing dementia, like it's going through the skull now and, and other brain diseases for transcranial, is there's a cascade of events that's happening. That's so when, we, happening, when yeah. we put it on the body, it seems like it creates a cascade of events. And then these reactions continue on after the treatment. And that's when you have a series of treatments, you kind of get that momentum going and it creates a cascade of events. So there's so many things happening. We're regulating inflammation. We're getting, we're aerating the blood. Right. And maybe we're, if you're getting over the abdomen, you're doing the microbiome. And so this could be what's, um, it's a holistic approach. Now, More like, nobody like has- acupuncture that, almost, like what we're doing. Acupuncture. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I learned about this, because, so, you know, there was an IVF study, um, a small study abstract that was published. Um, the first abstract was published around 2008 or nine. That was the American one where they did um, laser, acupuncture on transfer day, acupuncture on transfer day, right. sham laser, and the control group. And the laser group had a 15% increase in implantation just on, that was just on transfer day, right? Um, and so, and that was using like laser acupuncture on acupuncture points. That's and what kind of laser were they using? Were they using like this, they, this level? They were use, yes, they were, their laser was a 500 milliwatt. So just, you know, a Shiro's laser yes. was 60 milliwatt the probe. Wow. And the probe for the, that, that study was, was a 500 milliwatt wow. probe. Okay. So, um, so going back to like the mechanism, when I, I learned about that study, so we started using it in our clinic back in 2008, just for transfer day. Um, lots of things happened that made me get curious about what else it could do. I discovered Oshiro. He was doing it around, like I said, the carotid, which we also realized is addressing the vagus when he's addressing the carotid. Some around the cervical, so get to the um, brain stem, hopefully, stellate ganglia, um, and then an area on the, um, on the abdomen that can increase um, parasympathetic response, blood flow. Then I heard about um, um, a group in Denmark, which everybody keeps calling it a study. It wasn't a study. It was just um, um, professionals that use the laser reporting to the manufacturer their fertility success rates. Because okay. people keep talking about the Denmark right. study, right? It's not a study. Um, it was just self-reporting. So, um, but they had some great results, but nobody's replicated that study yet. We almost did it for frozen transfer in Vancouver right. um, with the Giga laser. And um, we opened up the study for recruitment after we got approval from ethics and everything at March, 2020. Remember March, 2020? <laughs> so I'm sorry. We, the, fun, the funding <laughs> went and we never got to do the study, but it's, you know, it's, it's on our uh, to-do list. So, yeah. What, so, but, so uh, but, but what they yeah. did, which was really cool is there's, they, they, they sh shared some really good results. Um, so I started thinking, well, why, why was that so good with the Giga laser, right? Yeah. From Power Medics. Why did that do so well? So in my mom, cause he didn't do up around the neck. It was all yeah. in the lower. I have abdomen. those studies. Um, yeah. So, What's her name? Mom just from yeah. shared them with me. Yeah. 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 So it's it's just case reports, right? That practitioners, case studies that practitioners yeah. sent in, right? And so I was thinking, first of all, it's a huge area, right? It's not like a little yeah. diode. 
it covers like 500 centimeters squared. Yeah. So it's getting a, lo it's a lot big, of- It's a big, so, yeah. So, uh, and it's powerful. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful laser, but it's off the body, which at first I did not like because it's off the body, which you lose a lot of absorption. But it's so powerful and you're doing it for 23 mm -hmm. minutes, you're gonna get some photons that are gonna reach yeah, some target it's gonna, tissue. It's gonna, yeah. But I think, um, a was local, and I, as we said, there's a cascade event, so we're hitting locally, and I think it's doing stuff locally. It's getting to the blood for sure, so you're rating the blood in that long period of time. And what I, I they may be seeing good results, and why we like it in our clinic, is it's over the microbiome, the gut microbiome. Right. And the gut microbiome yeah. impacts our hormones, right. impacts yeah. inflammation, I mean, our immunity. I mean, this is huge if you can impact the gut microbiome. And then I went to um, Australia and visited um, um, the clinic there, and they do a lot of fertility. And one of the uh, clinicians there had talked about using it for um, patients with endometriosis that they saw, she saw symptom relief, and also a lot of her patients with endometriosis infertility conceiving exactly. naturally. Wow. And she worked on the sacrum, okay? She did it all on the sacrum. And then I- With the same laser, Fred Con the Giga, the Giga laser? Different laser, right? Uh -huh. Different, but you know, but if you know math, you can kind of, yeah. you can kind of replicate it, but, but that means you got to have similar wavelength um, within, within, and you got to know what the power is and the irradiation, like how many joules per centimeter squared. And it, it, there is math. Like we have many different lasers in our clinic and I use, I used, I have a bachelor of science in math. Yeah. I still need a calculator. I'm an, I used to be an accountant, and write a CPA, that now Chinese medicine. So I sat and just figured out what I, what the math was. And then I do my best to replicate that whatever system I have, wow. right? Um, try, but it's not perfect, but we can yeah. get, you know, try, try to make it similar. And then I went and visited um, Fred Kahn before he passed in Toronto. He's the Bioflex, because he, in his book, in, in the book he was quoted by Norman Deutsch's The Brainwave Healing, there's a chapter on laser therapy for brain injuries. And he talks about a woman that had, he talked about women that had, um, anamiosis and endometriosis. He doesn't call it the disease, but he describes terrible pain right. with scarring and adhesions right. and, and they're needing <laughs> surgery. So, you know, anamiosis or endometriosis. And he shared how many of them were able to cancel their surgeries because of this. So I went and flew there to see what he was doing because he couldn't put it in his systems when he sold it because it wasn't studied that way. So wow. he gave me his protocol so I could program my machines that way. And he did the sacrum and also locally, right? So I decided what we're going to do is we're going to combine our shiros, right. the gut, and the sacrum. And so in our practice, we do, it takes a while, but we do all of it. And I ended up meeting, getting connected to um, Dr. Nakamura in Japan, who were, is an acupuncturist that does laser, acu laser therapy with acupuncture in IVF clinics. And at the time, this was pre-COVID, they had 10 years of data. Funny story, Amy, what I did is I really wanted to talk to Oshiro. So I wrote a letter, introducing myself and wanted to talk to him, put it through Google Translate into Japanese and sent it to about 12 clinics that I Googled that had the name Oshiro in it. I got no responses, but then I met a colleague of ours from California, originally from Japan, speaks fluent Japanese English, and he knew this clinic in, um, wow. in Japan, Nakamura. So I interview him. And, and I have my translator with me. And uh, first of all, the translator, I, t I showed them my letter. <laughs> he goes, you know, there's a whole respect hierarchy when you talk in Jap right. with, with Japanese. He goes, I'm not surprised nobody responded to your letter. <laughs> so I guess I was a little, my letter might've been a little bit of offensive. A little American, Google, no, I'm sorry. The way, you're not the way, yeah. Yeah. Way a little Google, aggressive. Google, <laughs> way Google translated it. Um, but Nakamura, when I talked to his clinic, they had 10 years of data where they showed they were doubling blastocyst rates what? when they did the acupuncture with low-level laser therapy. And so in Japan, I don't know if it's still like this now, but this is pre-COVID, they don't do donor eggs. They're not allowed to. So they keep trying and doing things and mini stims, everything until they either stop trying or right. get a baby because they can't move to donor eggs. So they get really tough cases. And so people will do multiple cycles and there they'll, they'll do herbs and acupuncture right. and nutrition and laser because they'll do anything they can to help these women and in mm -hmm. his his data they had doubling blastocyst rates it, with now this would be 14 years of data but back then it was 10 years here's the kicker we do a lot of a modified victorian stenner's protocol for the blood flow so okay. we'll treat constitutionally but we'll add some of the acupuncture with electrical stim right. in an ivs cycle to help right. with blood flow right. he did that and then wow. he did oshiro 
he did locally wow. over the abdomen. So he, and he did, did the all sacrum. of it. Well, he did what we were yeah. doing as well, but he figured out 10 years before and I didn't have data yet because we were only doing it for a short period of time and weren't really looking at the data. And he was able to share that we were definitely on the right track. Now he has a different machine, right? right. But again, do the um, math, right? you know, yeah. we'll do the math. And I tried to get the math, but I said like, how long do you do over the ovaries? Cause he has a, a higher powered laser, which can burn. So you have to move it all the time. Um, it's not low level. And um, he said, oh, it, when it gets uncomfortable, we move it, right? So, so that would be hard to do a study because we can't replicate yeah. it because they don't give us any real um, dosaging. But to do a study, so anybody that's planned to do a study, we want to make it, we want to be able to repeat replicate it, it. Um, yeah. replicate it. So, you know, we need to know the wavelength, the power, the time, where you're holding, yeah. how long, how many <laughs> joules, the irradiance. Yeah. But from the public's perspective, I will share this. There is no magic bullet. Right. Laser's not going to be the okay. the end all be all. Yeah. It, it, I it, I look at it as your uh, the the metaphor I like to use is horse carrying a carriage. Yeah. You're in a carriage. Your fertility fertility journey is a carriage, and you're trying to get on this long journey, which has mountains, ups and valleys, ups and downs, and it's a long distance. And if you have one horse, you may not yeah. get there at all. If you have two horses on your carriage, that's increased your chance. Yeah. Three, yeah. even better. Four, even better. So. Acupuncture is a, is a horse. Herbs is a horse. Diet lifestyle is a horse. Supplements are a horse. IVF is a horse. Mm -hmm. So you're doing everything yeah. you can to go back to Chinese medicine is to nourish the soul before you plant the seed. We're doing everything we can right. to make that soul optimal so the egg and sperm can reach their peak right. fertility potential. And that is improving mitochondrial function, yeah. reducing inflammation, um, increasing blood flow, reducing the stress hormones, um, supplementing where we have deficiencies, removing toxins. Yeah. Um, this is Just what we're doing. And, things. and so there's not like do this or do that. Like we have people call us go, I want to come, you know, I'm 50 and I want to do laser. Don't, right? It's, I don't think it's that kind of miracle. Right. And even in Nakamura, when I talk to him and his data and other studies we see, unfortunately, it's still the same thing. The 30 to 40 benefit the most, right? Yeah. Once you get over 40s, we see less benefit. And those are the ones that really need it. Even mm -hmm. the PRP, I think the data so far isn't showing any miracles for the ones that are 45 and over trying to use it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so we're still there. But, you know, if you're looking to do anything and everything, there's things available. So, yes, I get why you're going to want to do anything and everything. I just want to make clear, because I know how much people want this to yeah. want this to work. I don't think anything's a magic bullet. Low-level laser therapy, if it's done with good laser systems, has the opportunity to nourish your soil, to do so many things that can improve the cellular environment that may be what puts you over the edge from some yeah, fertile tips to fertile. Yeah, tips it, yeah. yeah. But and so the home then, systems are- Yeah, go ahead, the home uh, systems, that's what I wanna get to, yeah. I, if, you, if you could get to a professional using the home systems in between, maybe. We don't know because nobody studied them, right? right. And these are all LEDs, the home <laughs> systems. Just so you know, right. they're not lasers, they're LEDs. Um, but the beauty is you can have them on you for a long time yeah. And, um, and yeah, and yeah, and you could do it regularly, right. you know, rather than once a week or twice a week, you can do it four times a week. If you have a home system, I wouldn't recommend you do it every day. The cells need a chance to, to rest and do Covered. something with, yeah. with the light. Right. So don't do it every day. Um, I do like when I do my consults for people that contact me with their home systems, you know, more is not, more is not always better mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to energy and photons. So there is a, a happy medium too, even with lasers, a super powerful laser, too much isn't good either. We see with the tissue. It's like cooking a turkey. Slow, a lot of the home systems. Oh, steady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the home systems. The power is so low. It's like putting a turkey in your oven at low. It's never going to cook. Right. You know, it'll be frozen on the inside, um, but it's never going to cook. And and a high power, super high power, is like putting it on broil or in right. your oven. You're going to burn the outside. Yeah. Right? And it's not, not cooked cook on the inside. inside. So there is a happy yeah. meeting. Now it's a yeah. very generous one. But, you know, just by buying a red light thing off of Amazon, that's not, that could be a low cooker. It may, it may be a waste of money. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Because yeah. uh, right. nobody studied it. The mechanism, you know, it's still, you can still irradiate your blood, um, which is beneficial from the regulating inflammation, you know, if you're, if you're doing it. But again, nobody has studied that home system that I'm aware of. So I don't know. So when people ask me the couple of home systems I recommend, I've looked at it and I've kind of created protocols that I would do with them. But yeah. I'm clear. This is theory only. Yeah. Nobody studied it. I don't know. If you don't can't get access to a professional laser system, 
then yeah, get it. Try it at home. If you have the money, yeah. you can afford it, do it. If but if you can get, I don't think it can replace a professional system yet. They're not that. They're not that good yet. They're not. What about the smaller yet. ones that are like I, it's still expensive, but the five thousand dollar ones, like the the one I know. There's a couple different brands out there of the lasers. The ones that because I have there's a group of girls it's, that are in the training. Yeah. You can see community, yeah. and they're going to like it, pull together and buy one. Yeah. Um, so usually, usually the money tells you it could be a good laser, but it's not. That, that doesn't mean it's a right. good laser just because the money. <laughs> the question is, what's the wavelength? Um, is it programmable? what's the power right so okay. you know if you're using it and you're, you know i i like like a shiro's laser was 60 but don't forget he started doing that in the 90s yeah. that was a powerful laser back then if you're going to get a low level laser therapy you want something over 100 milliwatts ideally okay. my lasers can go up to 500 milliwatts and they're programmable okay. so i can modify um how much i'm doing because depending on where i'm putting it on the body i will change the dosaging and how much okay. time i put it on each spot because i'm I'm not only lasering the area, I'm looking for a reaction as in like when I do the carotid, this is based on time, less about right. joules because I want to irradiate the blood. So I want to hold it there right. long enough that the whole blood circulates once that it radiates. Um, but when I'm doing, um, the, when he did the area over REN12 for us, you know, yeah. um, that is, um, you're trying, and also the static ganglia, there you need power because you're trying to um, knock out uh, a structure here so right. it goes offline to engage the parasympathetic, right? right? Like I did this once for um, a woman that couldn't take um, the, they, they do, um, you're, they just sedate you here for retrievals. You're not, you're not um, unconscious, right. no fentanyl okay. and painkillers. Right. And she right. couldn't take um, the medication um, for various reasons for her retrieval. Um, so we're like, all right, you know, here we go. And she heard about, she came to our clinic for acupuncture and I asked if she's willing for me to use the laser because we've seen it for next studies where if you over um, dose the, um, the mitochondria around the spine, you can um, knock out kind of the, the pain response for 12 to 24 hours, right? So it can take away pain. So I went and just overdosed along the lumbar and sacrum to go and innervate the vagina and the ovaries, um, just overdosed it. And she did not feel a thing. It was pretty cool. This, you know, N of one, case of one, right? It wasn't a study. Yeah, uh, but, but that's but, you know, it. Yeah. But, we've done that, but we've done that with acupuncture too, electrical right. acupuncture for pain, right? We've done that yeah. for retrievals. Totally. Um, th this was just easier um, because we could wow. do it before she went in. I didn't have to be, it didn't have to happen during the retrieval. So we did it half an hour before a retrieval. We just dosed her up, but you would need a good laser. For yeah. That. So what are you using in your clinic? I know you have a bunch. Like what's we I don't have know. so many. We got, um, you know, we we have some sent to us because they want us to study. But we got the Giga in there. We got the Bioflex. We got Luminex. We got Power Medics. Um, so uh, we we got a many systems. So if you, there was like a practitioner like me that was interested in buying one, is there a specific one you tell from the professional the, perspective? Yeah, there's no perfect laser yet. So I'll tell you that's why in my clinic, um, sometimes I have sixty to seventy thousand dollars worth of lasers on somebody right with COVID, yeah. and I laugh because they're like, "How come you you know your acupuncture laser?" Well, the Giga is, is like forty <laughs> what forty two thousand or something. Forty thousand U.S. Yeah. dollars. So yeah, um, there's a couple things if you're asking like. What do I like? Um, I like the Bioflex system because it's programmable. Program programmable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, it's really nice. Um, I like um, that one. So we have that. They're razor nice. I like the Giga as well because um, of what the case reports were from all the practitioners. So again, yeah. if those are true and re can be replicated, then th this one covers the microbiome. I also like it from an acupuncturist perspective because... We, I can put it over and I can put my needles because all the other systems that like are that good, too. they have mm -hmm. to be on the body. But if I want to do abdominal acupuncture, I can put the needles in, it'll add the electrical stim to the needles and then put, no, you can put a gig that. over it. Right. That's, and yeah. So, and I would, and I, I've talked to you and Mark as well, our friends that I, I would modify what they've done with the giga when they did their case study, what Anne Marie Jensen, who shared in her yeah. book, she wrote a book on mm -hmm. laser. I wrote the English version forward to her, for her book. I would do it a little differently now that we know about um, the sacrum yeah. and other stuff. You can play yeah. around with programs. Um, I like the paramedics probes as well because you can um, move around the neck and other parts of the body. So the paramedic, I meant that one probe. I think it's the the handheld yeah, you, unit, right? You, like you'd you'd want to because two sides of the neck you got um, along the spine, the ovaries. So if you're a professional, you're going to want two of them. Um, and also 
help you with time because it cuts your time in half. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. Um, so I like that. So I'm familiar with the Bioflex systems. You know, I've gone to conferences and I've looked enough at the Giga. I'm very familiar with the Giga, um, um, and I've talked to them about programs that I would. They're on I would here right it. now too. Yeah. Um, hey, my uh, guy. So <laughs> yeah, I think so, Maya's so, on. I saw her come so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I spent years learning about the laser and talking to manufacturers. And you know, when you get a system, there's some systems that are really that you can program, but you really got to understand it. So that requires time. The Giga is, if I may say, kind of idiot proof. Yeah. There's like six programs. Yeah. So you just go and put on this program and put it over. So it's expensive. Um, from the practitioner perspective, there, it, there's a cost to it, um, but it's it's for day one you can use it. Yeah. You don't have to understand, and you can still use it. Right. Yeah. And then for clinically, you're doing it. You're treating fertility. Um, you know, are you? I know you were saying all the things, and and I like all the you know horses on the cart kind of analogy that it's not just one thing. So it's really hard to measure to say, yes, the laser is what's making the difference in my practice. But obviously, you're still using it. So I think I'm you feel, you yeah, feel I, good about using it. I feel it good about you, it. Yeah. I like it for two reasons. One is it doesn't work for everybody. Like there's some yeah. people like, you know, the herbal, like, you know, yeah. there's some people are doing acupuncture. We're not seeing the results. Then we add herbs and poof, it makes all the difference, right? Some people, it's the diet and supplements, poof, that's the horse that does it yeah. right for them. So, you know, what is off for them in their soil that's causing the issue? right mm -hmm. somebody has a vitamin d issue or a thyroid yeah. issue right. um you know if you address that you fix the issue and the soil is better right so it depends on what you're doing by the way lasers used to be told not to use for thyroid but there's now studies using it for hashimoto's um, wow. thyroid conditions right okay. as well also paper just came out recently it also been shown to impact blood sugar in a positive way Okay. So again, that helps with inflammation. So and hormones, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, regulates the hormones yeah, for sure. Yeah. Once you start affecting the gut microbiome, affecting yeah, inflammation, affecting blood flow. But um, you know, we've seen people where um, it shouldn't happen, but we've seen their antifocal count and AMH increase. So we see it does. You know, from a Western perspective, impossible. But yeah, we've not, seen it. We've seen, but I've seen that with herbs and acupuncture. Well, that's it. Sometimes. I see that. I feel like, and I'm not using lasers, yeah. but. Um, so, so, so yeah. I never get stuck on the tool, right? Yeah. I've always been, yeah. what do you, what's nourishing your soil, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the first thing you got to do the diet. Yeah. You got to do lifestyle. Lifestyle is adequate rest, moderate exercise and movement, right? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, rest, sleep and movement, right? Yeah. So, and then stress reduction. Those are core. You have to have that horse on your couch. Have to, no matter what. Right. And then you start bringing in things like acupuncture. Or, like I love my, I'm an herbalist, so I yeah. like to use herbs Same. when it comes to gynecology. If you have menstrual pain, you got clots, you got bad PMS, you got acne PMS. Yep. It's an herbal case for me, right? I really want to see yeah. that. If you're in your late 30s, 40s, um, yes, we want to use herbs even in an IVF setting. Um, personally, that I would, I that's what I prefer. So when you say, is it making a difference? I think it's making a difference. It depends on what's the issue with the soil. And, you know, when I see people that come in um, that are highly inflamed, right? And yeah. you can see these, you know, high sympathetic, highly inflamed, they respond well because I think right. Oshiro right. thought it was the blood flow of the ovaries that made the difference. Personally, I think it's its ability to regulate inflammation yeah. in the immune system. I think that is why people were doing so well with Oshiro and with the Giga Laser from Paramedics. Yeah. I think it's because, um, you're you're impacting inflammation and with the giga in particular yeah. you're impacting the gut microbiome and so if you're addressing the gut health um, and blood flow to the reproductive system right. you're reaching the um, vertebrae that are coming off um, to innervate the uterus and the ovaries yeah. you're hitting the blood flow and the vagus nerve there's just so much you can do to increase blood flow regulate inflammation um, support the immune system regulate blood sugars and yeah. maybe, maybe um, we're directly improving mitochondrial function through the mechanism of laser. But if not, if we're regulating inflammation, increasing blood flow, I think, and lower yeah. oxidative stress, then that may be also helping um, the mitochondrial function um, in an indirect way. Just like stress reduction indirectly increases blood flow to the reproductive system. Yeah. I think laser indirectly is increasing blood flow and improving mitochondria, I think, I don't know, yeah. um, in the reproductive area. And down the road i think if somebody developed a device or you know i see them now like even like um rather than a sex toy somebody developed a device 
that somebody could vaginally insert for five, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, that is a laser. Putting, that's yeah. putting out light that can get in because the, the, the tissue between so the vagina to yeah. the ovary is, is a much easier distance than from up from the belly to the ovaries. 100%. And when it comes to energy photons, the further the distance, the more you lose. So right. when I, when I, really so, so if you're using a device that's really flat on top of the belly, right. you can't push it down. Like when you use a probe, you can push it down towards the ovaries. And that may, in theory, get more photons at a therapeutic level there. So there is, the mechanism is excellent. Like excellent as in, it's got a good mechanism. It's exciting. We don't know. The delivery, yeah. We don't know what is the right protocol. We don't know what is the right dosage. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know. So to say with confidence um, that somebody should do this or with confidence, this, my device is like that Japanese yeah. study. I think that's probably a little overstated. Yeah. To say that the mechanism is there and that it holds good promise, that's Definitely. fair. Because the mechanism is there and it holds good promise. Um, and the women that we're seeing today don't have time for the study that's going to come out in five years. Right. Yeah, it's today. And yeah. and yeah, exactly. And, and and I think clinical data, I mean, I know you know that too, of just like it, um, I mean, obviously it motivates the, the, the research, but the anecdotal is just as important because it's the individual, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's moving the needle and, and the more we can give them to support them, the better, so, and as I, long as the do no harm. Yeah. 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 And one last thing on the home system. So there's a system out there that everybody's promoting for fertility. I, I don't want to give names because no, we're I not going to give names. I, I, yeah. But there's a system out there that everybody's all excited about. It's LEDs. Mm -hmm. People take it, use it at home. And I have a photon measuring device, so I can measure to see if if I, the, love... I do this to see if the manufacturers is on the trip or not. Because <laughs> they all say this is the power, but I can measure and say is this really the power? So I check all my laser. I'm like, yeah, right on track. Some are a little bit more powerful than they even say. Um, but that one, I couldn't get a reading off of it. So, so either I got a faulty system, right? Cause I got one of theirs, um, or it's not giving off any light and colleagues of ours will say it works great. I'm seeing great results. Right. But again, is it just I the warmth? It. Is it? Well, <laughs> I don't get it because I'm not reading photons, but here's the thing. So I interviewed, um, one of the, uh, man, one of the manufacturers, doctors in their, in their, um, company. And they had shared, this was a couple months ago, that now what they're noticing is when we send in the red photo, uh, the red or infrared photons yeah. to the cell, the cell sends out a yellow or green photon. Like it, it, oh, it communicates. Wow. So I said, and then that creates a cascade of things. Because before they're measuring chemicals, right? right? They're measuring ATP, right. they're, mm -hmm. but this is now going to quantum. And I literally said, I go, I go, what, what did you call that? He goes, it's basically quantum biology. We're sending light into the body and, and then responding. the cells receiving it and the cells are sending out light. So there's a whole um, quantum healing response. And he goes, we don't exactly get what that means, but that's pretty cool that we're seeing on a, um, I don't, you call it energetic. I don't know what you yeah. call it, right? On a quantum level. Quantum and so, level. May, so the reason we were dismissing these home systems at first is it has to, to impact the mitochondria. The mitochondria it has to get deep enough. That, right. that tissue has to receive it and it has to be at the right dosage to dislodge um, the nitric oxide, which yeah. causes vasodilation, improves the mitochondrial, the mm -hmm. ATP production. But now there's another mechanism that we've just learned about. We, we really don't understand. I don't understand wow. now, okay. that they're saying this is happening. So it can't you know, hurt. We're beings of hurt. light. Right. Right. We're getting red and infrared right. from the sun, by the way, right? right. We're getting it yeah. and our body's doing something. Mm -hmm. So, so, it, it it can't hurt so far the light therapy can't hurt that's true that we haven't yeah. seen anything that right. it, it can it, it can right. hurt right other than sometimes so you the could, pocket yeah, yeah you if, could, if, if it's, it's just, you could just spend money yeah. and, and 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 that's that's yeah that's that's the thing so so i have more i don't know than i do know yeah <laughs> um, that's what we love and, about you <laughs> and we're waiting we're waiting for studies you know i'm excited about it we're talking but when patients call me they go i want to travel to your clinic i go don't do that no. <laughs> like don't get on a don't get on a plane to this we don't have enough data we don't know right you know you. but locally my our patients like it and we get to combine it with the acupuncture so yeah. we're the only patients that get only laser therapy in our clinic or laser acupuncture are those that have incredible needle phobic if they have yeah. terrible needle phobic then we do laser acupuncture and photobiomodulation therapy yeah. the reason i say laser acupuncture 
this photobiomodulation therapy is using it based on PBM theory, like how Oshiro right. did it, right. and how the um, and how all the people I I mentioned um, um, did it. Roberta Chow in Australia, right. Fred Kahn in Toronto. Laser acupuncture is what we do on site for transfers, where we're stimulating the acupuncture with photons with a laser. Right. So if I did it with a needle, it's acupuncture. If I do it with my hand, it's acupressure. If I do it with heat, it's moxa. And if I do it with photons, it's laser acupuncture. So when we do on-site transfers, and here's a last little data, case that I can share with you, we do both laser acupuncture and some acupuncture before and after transfer. And we've modified our protocol because they're mostly day five frozen. The clinic did do a chart review of two years of our patients and they looked at only genetically screened embryos, those that had AccuBalance on site for those and those and compared to those that didn't. So all their pa patients right. over two years. Right. The reason they looked at genetically screened embryos is because they wanted to see if it's uterine receptivity, not an embryo issue. So right. if right. it's, if, and just to highlight this, when we do transfer day treatment, all we can help is uterine receptivity. The embryo 100%. quality is set, it's yeah. in the lab. Yeah. Uh -huh. So our patients, had a higher pregnancy rate and a lower miscarriage rate for those that had genetically screened embryos transferred. And then when we looked at our, our the chart reviews for those, because some people come from other clinics that we do the on-site treatments for at the clinic, we can only see ours. So again, this is not a study. It's just trying to figure things out by doing a chart review. Um, the patients that did a series of treatments leading up to transfer yeah. had even a higher Better pregnancy success. rate, lower miscarriage right. rate. And you know that the July meta-analysis yeah. for acupuncture, this is acupuncture, the same thing. Yeah. this is not laser, um, I'm talking to acupuncture. Their meta-analysis in July of 2023 showed an increase in pregnancy rates and live birth rates with the acupuncture. And same thing, those that did a series of treatments leading up to transfer had a better <laughs> result than those issues on transfer day. And that makes sense. It's, totally. you know, it's momentum, For the same reasons, reputation. it's like regulation to the whole, it's just the yeah. soil, the same reason. Yeah. Yeah. Look, if I eat salad once, that doesn't make me healthy, <laughs> right? If I, if I go to the gym once, it doesn't make me healthy. So usually if you're doing a little bit before, if you do it before retrieval, then yeah. you're working on egg quality, so embryo yeah. quality. And then if you do it, um, leading up to your frozen, at least during those three weeks leading up to your frozen um, to help with uterine receptivity. And if you have PCOS, endometriosis, yeah. um, or other conditions um, um, that are repeated failures, then you'd kind of yeah. want to do it probably even months before Agreed. you start your estrus. Agreed. So I don't know, did that answer? Did we geek out? Yeah, I think we covered so much. Okay. So those of you that are that came on at eight, just so you know, we actually started at 730. So there's the whole half hour you missed. <laughs> um, but we talked about a lot, Lauren, you're just so full of information. And I, I mainly listened and I appreciate it. Um, but no, I think this is really helpful. And it's obviously a lot of information and I think scientific information. But I feel like the big takeaway is these at-home devices aren't hurting anything, but they're not lasers. And I, and I think, no, they're and, LEDs. And, but also we don't they're know that LEDs. the lasers, yeah. go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. You, you yeah, they're LEDs. That. They're not lasers. Yeah, they're LEDs. And, and I don't know. And it, just having one does like, for, you know, when you know better, you want to yeah. do better. So yeah. look, when I there first started, yes, standing in front of a light, a red light sounded exciting. Now I know about the microbiome, the vagus nerve, um, radiating the blood, the nerve root. So to me, um, you know, like sometimes some people send me their, uh, and don't do this because I don't respond anymore, but people send me, I, what about this system? Should I use this system, home systems? You know, you get on Instagram, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do consults. We do schedule those, but um, but I use some of them. I used to, I used to say, do you have a Christmas tree? Because <laughs> stand in front of that, that's about same difference, right? So most of them are like, go, they're LEDs, right? Stand in front yeah. of your Christmas tree. They're probably yeah. going to do the same thing. So um, I think, you know, you do those at home. Um, you feel like you're doing something. If they're not going to break your bank, go for it. I think if you're the red light, if you're getting to superficial area where there's a lot of blood flow behind the knees, the elbows, or um, then you, you you may get some some good benefit. The other benefit is that you get to do it like four times a week. Yeah. So maybe um, over months on a long period, you'll have benefit. But I just don't know. I don't know um, if the home systems are enough. But your question at the beginning, which I say that is an overstatement, you can't say these systems at home are like that Japanese study by Oshiro. Absolutely not. Those are LEDs at home. They're off the body. Yeah. Oshiro used a laser system. Of, um, it was on the body. And he targeted specific um, features and points around the body, body to engage the parasympathetic. And so it's a different protocol. It's just too much of a reach. They're both photobiomodulation, but it's a Very total different, different um, yeah. 
it was, it, it's, it, it's just not fair. It's just like if somebody did a study on a home system, it didn't work. It would be wrong to say photobiomodulation doesn't work for fertility. That's right. That's right. You can say that home system didn't work yeah. for fertility, but each system and each protocol has got to be looked at on its own. And even if we did a study with a laser system, it didn't work. It doesn't mean another laser system wouldn't doesn't work because work. Yeah. it's all about wavelength, mm -hmm. dosage, um, time. And, uh, and so there's so many variables that can impact it. Yeah. So, yeah, we're thinking about getting the Giga. I, I feel like leaning towards it for sure. Pa um, patients, patients like it. It's easy. It's easy from a practitioner. It will break yeah. your wallet, but it's easy as a. But it, but you know what? It's 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 so worth it for the patients, and they come and you know eventually. Well, they I get think it paid too, too. There's only in the U.S. There's only a Giga. There's um, somebody in Long Island who he's been yeah. seeing some of our patients. Boston, Baltimore, San Francisco. I think there's only four or five gigas in the whole U.S. right now, yeah. which is yeah. also fascinating. And you have the giga, so. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I appreciate this, and I appreciate your knowledge so much, and it's so helpful. Um, yeah, it's good to see your face. Yeah, and if you have friends that can make a probe, I'll talk to them. <laughs> well, that's it. That's, like, I feel that's, like that's that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. I, of like. Exciting. That would be exciting. Some kind of, you know, we use the same kind of wand that they're doing ultrasounds with. Why can't it be that ultrasound yeah. wand and yeah. we, you know, yeah, fill it with yeah, diodes? It's got to be, it's got to be studied yeah, for course. safety, right? Because nobody's course, done it that course, way. But, yeah. but on the body, that's been done a lot. Like they've done that for skin issues. They've done it for pain and injury. Right. So we got a lot of data putting it on the skin around mm -hmm. the body. Like that is, but not that, necessarily that stuff. inside. Yeah. No, but they've done be. light. Just so you know, in Europe, they've done light for um uterine cancer and stuff oh, so they, okay. they stick a device in and then it opens up inside um so so th there is is being they've used it for ulcers inside the stomach going in wow. I mean, these are medical devices done by medical doctors because yeah. they have the scope to do that but it, it's being used in, in inside the body so it, yeah. it's being done okay yeah. cool all right, you go. Enjoy the rest of your night with your family, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And, um, yeah, if you guys have questions, you can DM, and then I can get Lauren back, or we'll figure it out. Okay. And we'll get you on my Conscious Fertility podcast, Amy. Do it. Let's do Let's it. Okay. Out. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.